Last evening, family, friends, and community members gathered for a candlelight vigil in memory of murder victim Lee Sean A. Smith, 30 of Horsepath, who died in a shooting incident in Humpton's Gut on Thursday, February 24, 2022. The vigil began at Spinks Bakery and led to Smith's place of business, Big Ballers, in Humpton's Gut. Throughout the evening, many persons addressed a large crowd, including 5th District Representative, the Honorable Kai Reimer, Health Minister, the Honorable Carvin Malone, Dr. Michael Turnbull, and family members. Forever, unto the upright there arise of light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be held in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees the desire upon his enemies. He have dispersed, he have given to the poor, his righteous endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall garnish with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. I repeat, the wicked shall perish. I'm always a joyful person. I pass the stage of being sad right now. I am angry. You understand? Because my mother is our pillar and she teach us how to love. We laugh together. We cry together. No matter what we do, we do it together. And Lishon didn't drop down from a tree. Lishon was well loved by his family. You understand? And we here grieving and our tears and the pain we feel in. Whoever did that to my leapy dogs, they're going to feel it twice as hard. They're going to feel it twice as hard because we're suffering. We cannot sleep. We cannot eat. We cannot bathe. We cannot do nothing. And let me tell you something. You see that tears we drop in? Because Lishon, I always protected that little boy from a small age. Alifia put Lishon in daycare. This time, Totola wasn't like publicized like no. Back in the days, you go in town, you catch a ride and whatever. I pass by that daycare and I see Lippy dog standing behind that bar. Just about JJ age. J Sean, sorry. And that little face is like saying, let somebody I know pass. Let somebody I know. I pass and I see that little boy. I just go in there and I pick up our child and I carry him home. And I say, Alifia, never you send Lishon again. I work in for 4 o'clock. You reach home at 3.45. So I could go to work because Lishon ain't going no daycare. Lishon was well loved. Whenever you see Lishon, he have the biggest smile on his face. Every day I talk to this boy, he would say, Auntie Mimi, I love you. That is how our conversation would end. Lishon called me to come and see him. I reached right here the week before. That boy was so full of life. It's like he had just transformed into being a man. He knew what man was or what man is all about. And they just take my nephew like this. Let me tell all you something tonight. You see that pain I feel in from inside here? Our tears, because we're letting it out, it's not going to be undone. Because Lishon was well loved. They treated him like he didn't have no owner where he did have an old. This is, this is tough uh, being here. Lishan wasn't just uh, someone in the community for me. He was a friend. He was like a little brother. Uh, I remember my scooter business that I had years ago. And I, I know with the passing of his, his brother, you know, he came around, he hung out, and he liked scooters. Um, from then, that was I think he was about 16, around that age, and we always be, we always were close from then. He always had a passion for being his own business person, and uh, you know when we when we look around and see what he achieved, you know we 
we should celebrate his life indeed. I know the grounds that we are standing on. I remember when Lishan called me and he said he wants to put a, a, a car wash here, but it was just dirt and bush. And you know, I, I said, well, if you're gonna do it, uh, go for it. There's a gut some there's a gut back here that he was a bit concerned about. I think I went away and I came back. I think it was in two days this whole place was up. So it just goes to show how ambitious and hardworking he was. And seeing this turnout this evening, it shows what kind of person he was in the community as well. I mean, I know, I mean, these are my little stories because I had to write a tribute and it, it was, you know, a bit heart wrenching trying to get the words together. But, you know, I remember this during the holidays, we were sitting right by the gas station and I told him I'm gonna go around the district and hand out some toys. He said, I'll, you could use my, my pickup. I think it was, we were doing it in about two or three days and the, the same day or days after he decorated the truck, the pickup with lights and you know, he was all excited and ready to go. You know, it just shows his heart and his commitment to the community as well. And uh, I know this is a sad moment, but you know, we should reflect on his life and know the goodness that he, he did for so many in the community. I look around, I see his friends, I, I know all the, the guys who are around him, and you know, we all loved him. And you know, we will always be here with his, you know, his children, his family, and so forth. And it just goes to show how much he was loved. I looked on the screen, I see that there are about four or 500 persons viewing right now and, um, online. So, you know, his, his audience, spread wide and uh, you know I just want to offer my condolences on behalf of my family on behalf of the district and I know we had a visual on Saturday and it was announced that you know we there's an amnesty to turn in your guns so you know I encourage persons in the community who may have a gun just go turn it in you know we get nowhere with these guns it's not too often that I'm lost for words. I cannot say that I knew LaShawn personally, but my two nephews, Kyle and Jalil, I, I saw them cry when they heard the news. And I've had the unique opportunity to speak with a number of persons who have lost loved ones who've lost loved ones as a result of COVID, for instance. As a member of the Lions Club, I remember that it was boss had led a march which stopped the crime. So the territory has been plagued with a number of senseless crimes. I bring condolences on behalf of my family and my other legislative colleagues to all the families of LaShawn and those who have lost loved ones through this time. It is critical that as we all gather here today because of the person who we love and care for, that we look towards this as a lesson in terms of what we can do in making sure that we stamp out the crime that is plaguing our entire territory. It has left too many of us sad. I've also had to eulogize a number of persons and normally there would be persons who um, have gone of age. I eulogized my late brother, Scratchy, Angel, Guy, brother, and it is critical. It is critical for us to understand that with each of these crimes and murders, it leaves an entire territory because I'm seeing persons not only from here in the fifth electoral district, but throughout the territory. 
because of someone we love and care for. So I join in your grief. I just want to share with us here, as little Sean was a friend and a brother to us that are standing here, and for us who have lost other brothers, are we our brother's keeper? Cain was upset because he wasn't treated like Abel. So he killed his brother Abel. And he was jealous of Abel. But God looked at him and said, won't you be loved just like your brother if you do the right thing? And Abel, Cain was still angry and he devised to set up his brother and kill him. And when God asked him, where's your brother? He asked if I'm my brother's keeper. Tonight, if you're listening, if you're here, I want all of you to understand, regardless of where we are in these Virgin Islands, we are our brother's keeper. We have to find a way to not allow our anger to overcome us. Because right now, our brothers are supposed to be not in a morgue, not in a hospital, not in a cemetery. Our fathers are not supposed to be missing from graduations. Our fathers are not supposed to be missing from picking their children up at night. They're supposed to be by our sides. But because of anger, we're missing. And I want all of us to ask ourselves right now, are we being brothers to each other? Are we being sisters to each other? Are we loving each other? Right now, we look around at his kids in front of me. And as his kids lay and sit in front of me, in front of his picture, for the next years as they go forward, all they have is pictures and memories. And when we ask, where is his brother? Where is his father? What will we say? We need to be able to get to a point where forgiveness and love permeates. Where we're able to change and be able to forgive. We lost not only a brother, but we lost a friend. And we're asking us right now to look at ourselves in the mirror. To be able to look at his children and his unborn children. And when they ask, where is my father? What are we going to be able to say? For the grieving that are here, the mothers, the wives that have lost people, it is not easy. So we ask right now for God to be able to comfort us, to be able to heal our land. Because God looked around and told Cain, your ground is filled with blood and whatever you plant here is going to be cursed. We don't want our land in this Virgin Islands to be cursed. Persons who were in the area at the time of the shooting or who may have information on a possible suspect are asked to contact the major crime team at 368 5682 or the Rural Virgin Islands Police Force Intelligent Unit at 368-9339. Smith is the second homicide victim for 2022 in the Virgin Islands. Ron Grant reporting for 284 News.